What's up guys, update video. Um, ordered some parts from subispeed.com. Not that I'm promoting them. There's other sites out there, Raleigh Sport Direct, Parent.com, you name it. Tons of stuff for WRX is out there, but that's just the one I've been using. Anyhow, my parts came in earlier this week and my car is getting close to the 6,000 mile oil change interval. Had time this weekend, starting last night, Friday. So I just went ahead and did some work on my car. Um, ordered the Perrin uh, brass shifter bushing, which I already replaced. And this is not a how-to video on any of that stuff. There's tons of those videos out there. You can look them up. I'm just gonna give some impressions and maybe some, some pro tips or not that I'm a pro, but maybe give you some trial and error tips. Um, so this is the bushing. I already put the brass one in. I'll get to that on the install. Um, here is the drain plug, OEM drain plug that I replaced with a brass Fumoto lever plug. So next time I change my oil, all I have to do is turn the little lever and uh, the oil comes out. And then here is uh, some tail is turn wiring harnesses that turn the LED lights um, into your turn signal. And again, um, subispeed.com where you can just search in YouTube or Google. There's tons of videos out there with people doing it, how to do it. I'm not going to do that. I don't have a GoPro and I'm not really into that right now. So anyhow, did my oil change, um, threw in a K&N oil filter, not for any particular reason, just I did. I've used them before. I kind of like them. I like the little wrench thing on top. Oil change wasn't too bad. Um, the Perrin bushing, um, it's right about here on the car when you're laying under it. And my pro tip or trial and error tip is, unless you have like a high jack stands, um, if you're using risers like I did, and these are Rhino risers, I got these from AutoZone a couple years ago, been working great for me. Um, if you're using the risers though, I would suggest laying down vertically and sliding under the car. Um, I had way more clearance than trying to do it from the side. And you just put all your tools right there at the side of the wheel and then you slide under the car from the front and wasn't too bad. Um, these risers give you just enough clearance with this car. Um, once I do my lowering springs, I'm probably gonna have to use some, some lead up blocks because if I lower this car, um, any, you know, the front of my car is gonna scrape on these risers. So just in case somebody wants to know, these are Rhino risers. I think I got them from AutoZone for like 40 bucks a couple years ago. They work great, but if your car is lowered, you're gonna have to take some additional steps if you're using these. Um, if you have jack stands, of course, you don't have to worry about it. Um, another trial and error slash pro tip, not that I hurt my hand, but I noticed the there's a little plate that covers the linkage, the, the where the bushing is that you're trying to get to, and those bolts bolt into the transmission there, and they're tight as all get out. And when you're trying to pull those down with all your might, there is a big, thick metal brace pretty much right in the way coming across the transmission. And man, that thing looks like doom for your knuckles. I mean, I, I lightly brushed my knuckle on one of them when I took out the first bolt. And then I realized, okay, I need to position myself and be careful because if I try this again, I'm, I'm going to hurt myself. And there's actually a guy on YouTube where he does that very thing. He, you know, cranks it and rips his freaking knuckle off on that that mount there so just be mindful of that also when you put your tools and everything next to the wheel there you want to have some rags good amount of rags or, or uh, paper towels or something there's tons of grease on the linkage back there at least mine had tons of grease and uh, I think the engineers realized that this part wasn't that great and instead of engineering something better or coming up with a better implementation, they were just like, you know, F it, grease is cheap, throw a bunch of grease on there and hey, let it ride. So there was tons of grease on there that I had to wipe off. And, um, you know, there's some videos out there of people who've done the upgrade and they say they don't notice a difference. Well, here's my thoughts on it. First thing, this is rubber, rubber degrades, rubber has give and at some point this part will either fail or have to be replaced so that's just my take on it with brass you don't have to worry about it um, in addition to that once I put the part in in addition to my um, my Ashiko 
high mass, heavier shifter knob. Um, I don't even have to take this card on the road. I can tell a massive difference already. Infinitely smoother, goes in the gear. Still notchy, you know, this is a cable, cable type system shifter. Um, so it's still notchy, but that stick, you know, those sticking points you sometimes get when you're shifting, I don't feel that at all. And I, I think the, sh the sticking comes from the rubber giving. The rubber has give. So as you're putting it in gear, the rubber is kind of bending and, and con you know, contorting. And that's where you're getting that kind of sticking from. With the brass, it's, of course, brass. It's solid. So there's no give. So although notchy, you don't get the sticking points. And combined with my, my heavier shift knob, dude, I can't wait to take this thing out on the road. It, it feels great already. Nice and smooth. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? The Fumoto drain plug, that's, that's self-explanatory. It's a plug, it replaces the, the drain plug. Um, it's up under there. If you know how to change oil, it's not a big deal. You take out the drain plug, you drain your oil, you put the Fumoto in, um, and you just add a little bit of oil to your crankcase and make sure it's not leaking. And if it's not leaking, hey, you're good to go. Finish your oil change. That's pretty easy. The last thing I did was the um, tail is turned, and I'll see if I can get that on video, but what that does is, uh, let's hop in here, what that does is it turns your, um, your tail lights, your tail brake lights into turn signals. Click, click. Yeah, you're not. Uh, you might be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it. See that? Cool. So, some pro tips on that. And that's actually a pretty. That was a pretty easy mod to do. Well, I should say half of it was easy and half of it was a royal pain in the ass. Um, going into the trunk, and there's videos on this too online. Pretty easy. You have um, two tabs right here at the corner of the trunk. Just use a flathead screwdriver. Boom. And boom. You take those out. The harness just goes right in line between the harness that's already in there. And you just connect it. It's easy. Stupid easy, actually. Once you do that, though, the LEDs use less power than the, the standard bulbs. And your blinkers are going to blink really fast. Click, 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 click. And if you go to diodynamics.com, they explain all this. Um, this is the stock relay that controls the blinking speed. This needs to be swapped out. Um, when I ordered this from subispeed.com, they have like a $10 upcharge. So when you order the harness, you can get the replacement blinker. What they don't tell you is where the hell that blinker is. Or they give you a rough idea. They say, it's under the dashboard. Okay. And it makes a clicky sound. So I was working kind of in the dark garage last night. Or dim. It took me a while to find it. So I will help you guys out. Pro tip. That diode. If you look under your steering wheel. Upper left hand corner. Uh, where are we at? It's right up in there. Boom right up in the upper left hand corner underneath the dash but that's where the the OEM was that part was the biggest pain in the freaking ass for me to get out it was harder than the oil change the bushing everything combined um, it's in there with like some nylon fittings and the wiring harness I it, it just I, I there's no space first of all you're down here under the car so I'm all twisted and contorted couldn't get my arms up in there and then the, the nylon fittings, I couldn't figure out how to get them off. It's like this this Chinese, you know, torture puzzle or something trying to figure out how to get that thing out. I eventually got frustrated and I just like ripped it down from the mounting. Um, 